Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. This video is a continuation to our last video where we took a look at how we can download and install GHDL and GTK Wave. This video will help us get started and program our first VHDL code. The video will be split up into three different sections. The first is related to FPGAs and VHDL, where we will be briefly introducing FPGAs and VHDL. The second part of the video will take a look at VHDL code structure. And the third is our implementation of our first VHDL code. This video assumes that you have installed a VHDL code editor, such as Notepad++, and that you have installed GHDL and GTK Wave. If you haven't, please take a look at our last video. I have also linked the video in our description box. So let's get started. What are field programmable gate arrays, or FPGAs? FPGAs are a type of configurable integrated circuit that can be repeatedly programmed after manufacturing, hence the name field programmable, meaning that you don't really need to take it back to the manufacturer to be reprogrammed and programmed. You can directly do so in the field. The second part of the name, gate arrays, is what the field programmable gate arrays are made up of, and they are made up of two-dimensional grids featuring a large number of gates, which are the fundamental units of that digital logic that makes up the FPGA. Since this video's aim is to get you started with your VHDL code using GHDL and then possibly through simulating the code using GTK Wave, we won't be going into depth in this small video series on what FPGAs are and what makes them up. However, it's important to understand that, our, that there are different hardware description languages out there, primarily two that you can use to program FPGAs, and they are VHDL and Verilog. So as we've mentioned, there are two primary languages for programming FPGAs. The first is VHDL, which is the one that we will be using in our video, and the second is Verilog. And VHDL is short for Very High Speed Integrated Circuit Hardware Description Language. It is based on the Ada and Pascal languages. It is case insensitive and strongly typed. What does strongly typed mean? Strongly typed programming languages are ones where each type of data, such as integers, characters, and hexadecimals, and pack decimals, is predefined as part of the programming language. And so VHDL is a strongly typed language that is verbose and provides high levels of abstraction, making it easier to write complex designs. And it's popular in Europe and in industries such as aerospace and defense. Whereas Verilog is more of a C-like language, it is case sensitive and has a lower level of abstraction, making it more challenging for complex designs, but also allows for great control over the design. It is mild, mildly typecast, so it's not as strongly typecast as the VHDL, and it is considered much easier to learn, and it's popular in the United States and in the commercial sector. Now that we've taken a look at what FPGAs are briefly and the primary hardware description languages used to program FPGAs, let's take a look at a basic example in the VHDL language. And this is by no means an exhaustive uh, explanation of how to write VHDL code, but can be used as a refresher in terms of how we can write VHDL code for a simple AND gate. One of the easiest multiple input gates to understand is the AND gate, and that's why the example is based on an AND gate. And if we take a look at the truth table of an AND gate, if the inputs of one of the inputs at least was low, then the output would be low. And if both inputs are high, then 
we would get a high output. But how can we describe such a such a gate or a digital logic gate using VHDL code? Well, VHDL quite simply is can be thought of into three distinct sections. The first section is us specifying the VHDL library that we will be using. Then we would have to specify the entity and then the architecture of that entity. And we will go through each one of those just to briefly refresh on what each distinct part of the code means. The first part of the code specifies the VHDL libraries that you would be using within your code. In our case, we have the IEEE library that we would like to use some certain packages in the code. And the package that we would like to use is the stdlogic1164 package that is coming from the IEEE library. And the reason we need this package is we would like to get access to the stdlogic data type which is the most commonly used data type to define and represent binary values, which are zeros and ones within our FPGA design. So that's the first part of the code. The second part of the code is the entity. And the entity essentially describes the inputs and outputs of the module we are trying to describe. In our case, it's the AND gate. And so we would need a port declaration that establishes the interface of the object to the outside world. And there are three main parts of the port declaration. We would need to have a name for the input or output ports. We would need to define the mode of that port, whether it's an input, an output, or an input, an output, or buffer and we would need to describe the data type of that port. So in our case, we have three main ports. We have two input ports with a mode of in, meaning input, and the data type being std logic. Whereas the output is the and result, as you can see, and result, and the mode is out, hence it's an output, and the data type is std logic. After creating our entity, we need to describe the architecture of that entity. And the architecture declaration describes the operation of that component that we've created. So it describes the functionality. In our case, we will be describing the functionality of the AND gate, and therefore we specify within our architecture that the AND result, the output of the AND gate, is nothing but the AND operation of the two inputs, input 1 and input 2. And with that, we've created our first VHDL code to describe an AND gate. So now that we've seen how a VHDL code is broken up, into different sections, most specifically the library, the entity, and the architecture. Let's take a look at how we can write that code, exact code, in Notepad++. First, open up Notepad and make sure that the language is set up as VHDL, so that when you write down the code that we've already uh, explained, uh, it gets the syntax gets you know highlighted. So first. First things first, we define the library, which is the IEEE library, and the package that we will be using from the IEEE library. The second part of the code, which was the entity, is where we define the interfaces to the outside world for the AND gate as an entity. So we've created an entity, named it the AND gate. We've created a port declaration. We've specified the two interfaces as inputs, which are input 1 and input 2, and the output interface or port, which is the AND result. We've also specified the mode that they're all in. So input 1 and input 2 are both inputs. That's why we've uh, put the mode as in, and the data, uh, the data type for the inputs are std logic.
As for the output, the mode is output, so we've mentioned out over here, and the type is a CD logic. After specifying the ports, we have ended. We we end the entity. Then we have the architecture, and the architecture typically you would define some signals over here if you would need any. But since this is a very simple design, we would start with defining the functionality of the AND gate right after the begin. And of course, the architecture should have a name. In our case, we named it RTL. You could name it whatsoever, but it should be of the entity that you have defined over here. So since we've called the entity AND gate, the, the architecture RTL will be of the same name of the entity that we've de defined up here. Right after the word begin, we have defined the functionality as the result or the output of the AND gate to be the AND operand of both inputs, input 1 and input 2. Now, the syntax should be correct, but let's remove one of the semicolons over here. And let's say we would like to check the syntax with the help of GHDL. To do so, we would need to open up the directory, the folder directory, and then open up the command line. After, an, after opening up the command line, we can check the directory using the dir, dir command, and we can see that this is the directory, and we have one folder known as the add.vhtl. To check the syntax, we would need to first of all save the code. Then write ghdl dash s add dot vhdl. We could see that there is an error over here, which is the missing semicolon at the end of the port clause, and that's correct. We should have a semicolon over here. And when I fix that and run the command again, we could see that we have fixed all errors. Now that we've tested the code, and we've made sure that the there is no syntax errors. How can we make sure that this code actually represents the behavior of an AND gate? To do so, we would need to create a way for us to test this code, and that is a test bench. Test bench is basically a code that is main its main purpose is to Look at our unit under test, and in our case, our unit under test is the AND gate. And we would look at that unit under test through a simulation environment so that we can analyze what we've created in terms of code and see whether or not the code gives us the behavior that we would like to expect. And this means, essentially, whether or not the AND gate that we have just programmed through a hardware description language does it behave like the truth table that we've just observed a few slides ago. And this is exactly what we will be doing in our next video, where we will be taking a look at how we can create a test bench for the AND gate and simulate it with the help of GTK Wave.